Good evening. Thank you for your attention. My name is Greg Small, and I'm the Executive Director of Climate Solutions, and I cannot thank you enough for being here tonight. Thank you so much. So I was thinking, I just took a, a quick break, and I was thinking, you know, we, so we have, I think a lot of you know, we have a breakfast in Seattle uh, that's similar to, to this dinner, and we had it in May. And uh, this year, we were lucky enough to have Mayor Ed Murray come, and on that particular day, he made a very big announcement stating the city's and Ed Murray's strong opposition to the Shell Oil rig, which was a huge deal. And here we are, a few months later, with another historic first. And again, I really can't thank enough the leadership of the mayor. Charlie, thank you so much for your leadership on this. So we're on, a, we're on a little bit of a roll here with our events in terms of big announcements coming, so look, I'm looking forward to the next one. Um, I'm going to be brief, and all I really want to talk to folks about today is what Climate Solutions is going to be focused on in the next year, the year of, you know, unique opportunities. Presidential years are different than any other year, and we need to make the most of what 2016 has to offer for us. So here's what Climate Solutions is going to be focused on between now and the end of 2016. Number one, the West Coast Climate Campaign, which I think many people here are familiar with. The vision is pretty straightforward. It's to create this big economic block along the West Coast, running from California all the way to British Columbia, and put in place the most aligned and ambitious set of public policies anywhere in the world. That's what we're aiming to do with the West Coast Climate Campaign. And if we're successful, when we are successful, we will earn commitments to entirely phase out coal from Oregon and Washington's electricity sectors. We're going to hear about more of that in a little bit. Two, where we'll enact binding limits and account for the price of carbon pollution in Oregon, Washington, joining our neighbors to the north and south whose economies already account for the cost of carbon pollution. In Washington State, where I am based, our objective is to put the first in the nation effort to price carbon and cap carbon in the entire country. We're looking to do that in November of 2016. Incredibly excited to make that happen. And the last piece of the West Coast climate campaign is something that this great state has already made enormous progress on. The clean fuel standard, which depending on how you count, we won twice, probably three times. We won for the first time in 2009. We won again twice in this past legislative session. It was an enormous victory. We are going to continue to make sure that we put in place policies that wean us from our dependence on oil and defend uh, efforts to undo those from the oil industry, which we may see in November of 2016. So when we launched the West Coast Climate Campaign, you know, about three years ago, we realized we had to do something quite different than we had ever done before. And one of the things that Climate Solutions and others have done is work to build incredibly deep and diverse coalitions. In Washington, we did that through the Alliance for Jobs and Clean Energy, which is this, an amazing effort. And here in Oregon, as I think most of you are familiar with, We've helped to co-found Renew Oregon, an incredible coalition. I want to call out in particular Thomas Wheatley. Thomas, where are you? Thomas. We brought Thomas on, I don't know, maybe eight months or so ago, and the sort of growth and development of Renew Oregon has been extraordinary. And again, Kristen, in a moment, we'll talk a little bit more about the plans ahead. So that's number one, the West Coast Climate Campaign. Number two, powering past fossil fuels. Well, a big part of that happened today from the mayor, but as I think many people know, the Northwest is ground zero in the fight to prevent the fossil fuel industry from building infrastructure to extract and transport coal and oil. We have partnered for the past five years with an incredibly diverse set of players and we're going to keep doing it. And you know what? We are kicking butt 
on this campaign. And we're going to keep kicking butt and make sure the Northwest holds the line at keeping the coal in the ground and the oil from being burned. And it's an incredible campaign. And I'm thankful all of you for all of you have done on that effort. And third, and incredibly importantly, we are working on demonstrating the pathways to a low carbon economy. And a lot of what Danny is going to be talking about is the solution side of how we solve this crisis. What we're focused on is developing and promoting solutions to reduce greenhouse gas emissions at the scale the climate crisis requires. We're identifying the pathways to a low carbon future. We're communicating the clean energy future is inevitable. It's irreversible, and it's irresistible. We're also working with Northwest cities to set and attain significant carbon reduction targets for building, transportation, and the energy supply. One tool that we've put together that I am incredibly proud of and I think is a great resource and I want all of you to know about is ClimateCast. So this is our weekly curator review of the biggest and most important climate and clean energy stories. It's a great resource. And if you're interested in subscribing to it, it comes out every week, you can view our website and sign up there. So that's what we're doing in the next year. The West Coast Climate Campaign, which is just about the darn most ambitious campaign in this entire country, stopping the fossil fuel exports and the transport of oil, and continuing to push the pathways to a low carbon economy. It's a big agenda. We're incredibly excited about it. And we look forward to working with all of you to make it happen. Again, thank you so much for being here tonight. We really appreciate it.